Alright, so this is a quick tutorial on wave relationships and the factors that affect uh, the various measurements you can make about a wave. We're going to build off the results from our lab and the PHET simulator. Our main focus really are going to be amplitude, wavelength, and velocity, but I thought we'd start off with frequency. We didn't test this in the lab uh, because it's not very easily testable. It really more than anything what the uh, frequency of any source depends on, depends on how it's being created. So in a sense, frequency depends on the source itself. All right. So for tuning fork, it's just how the tuning fork is designed. It doesn't matter how hard you strike it. Uh, it doesn't matter that the tuning fork is vibrating in air, a particular medium. Uh, the way it's built is going to determine a particular frequency. Same with the light source. Ultimately, um, the color that comes out of a light source depends on temperature, but what's easiest to say that the frequency of a particular light source depends on the source itself. We don't need to go any further because it does not depend on any of the other wave properties. Um, it's more dependent on physical parameters of the system. So there's no relationship to talk about here. Amplitude is also fairly straightforward. Amplitude depends simply on the input of energy. Okay, so we already talked about how waves transfer energy from one place to another. The pulses that you see, the size of the pulses, the amplitude is just a, a indirect measure of that. So amplitude will increase with energy. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, it does not depend on frequency, how quickly you move a wave. There is a special case where frequency can matter, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, it does not depend on how fast the wave is moving. Uh, it's not like kinetic energy or anything like that. All right, wavelength is perhaps the most complex in the sense that it depends on two things. Um, we saw it definitely depends on the frequency of your source. Higher the frequency, okay, um, the wavelength decreases. So there's an inverse relationship between the two. And we'll explore that more later. Uh, wavelength also depends on the medium. Okay, so in a given me, or if you change a medium for a given frequency, you will get a different wavelength. And as we'll see in a bit, medium really goes towards velocity. So as velocity increases, wavelength will increase. Okay, so that will make sense in a little bit. But That's supposed to say increase. All right, lastly, the speed of a wave or the velocity of a wave depends on the medium only. Okay, uh, it does not depend on frequency, it does not depend on amplitude or the energy input. Um, for strings, uh, we can say that as the tension, which is an indirect measure of something about the medium, Okay, increases, velocity will increase. This doesn't quite apply to liquids and solids. There are other measures that are uh, analogous to tension, but we're going to skip that as well. So these are the basic wave relationships. Key thing is, again, amplitude is energy. Wavelength is primarily frequency because generally your medium is not going to be changing, but if it does, that will affect the wavelength. And velocity, for most cases, is going to be constant because you're usually not changing your medium. But in air, that can be changed uh, most readily by temperature. In a string, that's changed by tension. So uh, there are cases where you can alter the velocity. We'll explore that more. One thing we can look at that ties together, especially wavelength, frequency, and velocity, is the wave equation. V equals lambda f. So this in of itself is not a causal relationship. Velocity does not depend on lambda and f. It's simply the product of the two. However, if we rearrange this, we can get a causal relationship and say lambda equals v over f. So if you alter the medium, you alter the velocity. If it goes up, you'll get a greater wavelength. Uh, also, if you change the frequency, which in a particular medium, if it goes up, you'll get a shorter wavelength. Or if the frequency goes down, you'll get a longer wavelength. So that's a useful relationship in terms of cause and effect. So let's look at an example here just to make sure that uh, this is making sense. Okay, so we have a continuous wave being produced and it is light, looking as a transverse wave of light and it enters a transparent uh, block of plastic. 
and at the boundary some of the light is reflected as it always is unless you have some special optical um, films, uh, lenses, etc. But we'll assume some is reflected, most is transmitted, and it passes up the other end. The tension in the block is less than air. I use this word tension just to kind of relate to what we talked about before, even though tension doesn't affect this, actual tension doesn't affect the speed of light, but there's some other factor that does. So we just want to ask how the following properties will change at the plastic block. So we want to know will, will amplitude change at all? Well, we got to ask ourselves, is the energy into the block more or less than what went into it? Can't be more because we're not doing any work, there's no extra energy source. But because some of the light is reflected back, that means less or not all the light gets through. So we would expect the amplitude then to decrease slightly because some of the energy was reflected. Okay, so some of the wave reflected. We're going to draw the wave in the medium in a second. All right, what will happen to the frequency? Well, if you go back up to what we talked about earlier, it said frequency depends on the source. Uh, the source is something out here that has nothing to do with what's going on at the interface of these two media, so the frequency stays the same. All right, for reasons that we just discussed, because source isn't changing. Okay, how about the speed of the wave? It enters another medium, so it has to change. That's an important thing to realize, especially with light. And we will look at that in terms of something called index refraction later. But for right now, you're told that the tension is less than that in air. So we'll interpret that then as if this said is temperature tension increases, speed uh, increases, then if the tension is less, then we're going to say that the speed of the wave decreases. Okay, so it slows down upon entering that plastic block. All right, so if the, um, now we can ask well, what's going to happen to the wavelength. One might be tempted to say that the wavelength would not change because the frequency didn't change, but we also have to look at if there's any changes in speed, which happens, so wavelength will decrease. Okay, because even though F stayed the same, the velocity went down, and as we saw up here, a lower velocity uh, for a given frequency will give us a, long, a shorter wavelength. So if you want to draw this, and this is going to be hard for me out of this notebook, but you basically want a lower amplitude, shorter wavelength. So we're going to get something like this. Okay, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. All right, so that looks like a little bit shorter than before and definitely lower. The question is, what's going to happen when we go back out? You can ask the same questions. There will be some reflection again, so our amplitude will go down a little bit more. Frequency, still the same. Speed, well, we're going back in air, so that's going to go up. Therefore, our wavelength is going to increase. And since the speed here is going to be the same as the speed of the original, it doesn't matter that we lost energy along the way. The speed depends on the medium. Uh, this will go back to looking like the original wave in terms of the same wavelength, just shorter. I'm not going to try to draw that, but you can imagine it. Okay, so you should be able to do the rest of the problems fairly easily. Um, none of this is necessarily obvious, but just look back to make sure that you're not making silly mistakes.